Hey everyone, Jeff Williams from Auburn University's D Lab. I'm out here in one of our yards because we are filming a little update for you all. So I frequently get asked questions over what we're up to and of course we try our best to communicate our activities out to our stakeholders and out to the public. Um, but sometimes it might not be so effective because we have to wait several months for a scientific paper or maybe we're only really able to hit a large audience when we're at a beekeeper meeting, whether or not that's a state or regional one. So we're hoping that this YouTube channel and these updates that we're going to do probably every couple of weeks will provide a much more dynamic uh, kind of flow of information to you all, much more updated. So first up, we're going to visit one of our postdocs, Augustina, and she's working on a study connected to Viroxan. And that product is quite liter literally the most recent product that's available to beekeepers. And I think it's actually landing in beekeeper supply shops uh, today. It's mid-August here. Um, we're in Alabama. And so let's go check out what Augustina is working on as part of her experiment into Viroxan. All right, we've kind of rudely interrupted Augustina here. Um, so we're really happy that Augustina is uh, with us at the lab. She joined, uh, you joined in January, right? January this year. Yeah, from, from Argentina. So she's officially uh, hired at Auburn as a postdoc, but you're actually a visiting scientist and a scientist at a government facility in, in Argentina that works with bees. So yeah, again, really, really happy that you're here. Um, also coordinating mm -hmm. the U.S. beekeeping survey. So we're here to talk about Roxanne and the mm -hmm. experiment that you're running as part of our USDA SCRI funded work. Um, we've got a lot of teams here. It's almost like all hands on deck from the honeybee uh, perspective to to do these assessments. So um, yeah, what's going on at this yard? How many colonies do we have? What's uh, What are our treatment groups? Um, let everyone know. Okay, thank you, Jeff, for the introduction. Uh, we started um, this uh, field trial uh, during July. We are testing different uh, treatments and treatment combinations for controlling the mites, the varroa mites during the end of the season. We know that it's a moment in your beekeeping that you are willing to control your mites before starting the fall and also probably the mite infestation are really high. So we are we having 75 colonies and we are testing uh, five different groups. One is the control group that is untreated so we can see how the mites are um, behaving without any kind of treatment and then we have a positive control that might be AP bar treatment uh, and then we are testing uh, two new products that are available for the beekeepers for this last season. One is Baroxan, it's oxalic strips. So they are uh, prolonged um, extended release uh, products that you can leave in your colony for up to 56 days. And also we are combining this with Amiflex that is a flash treatment based on Amitraz. Got you. And so our, our kind of hypothesis is that it's more like a maintenance treatment or um, maybe it will reduce numbers down below that threshold when the mite levels are, are like, you know, maybe just popping up above that 3% three, three level. Um, but we don't think it will knock down mites necessarily if there's a really high high level. Is that, that's what we're thinking. Yeah, right? we are thinking that this period could be useful to have it in a long period in your colonies. So, but we need to control the mites as soon as you pull your honey out of your colonies. So the flash treatment that we are combinating is that that's the reason why, because we are expecting a really quick knockdown for the first week. And then you have like 40 or so days more to slowly control all the mites that might be left in the colony. And also we are expecting a lot of mites in the brood. So uh, this product is, is like up to three cycles in your colony. So it might control as long as the, um, the mites are coming out of the, of the Got cells. Got So it'll zap, it'll zap the, the new mites emerging with the developing... Exactly. Uh, the developing bees of the young adults, yeah. yeah, over time. Okay, so I'm looking here and we've got three strips. Can you kind of describe to us why we've got three strips there and, and the, the label? I mean, it's been available on the EPA website for a while, but um, as people go and are interested in this product and check it out on beekeeping websites, I guess they'll be able to to probably um, yeah, identify like why, you know, if they're gonna do three or two per brood box, but how come, why do we have three strips uh, right now? Uh, the label is like, you have to use one strip every two and a half frames. So if you have a, a, a bottom box with 10 frames, you should four strips and another four strip if you have a 
full top box. However, it seems too much for the colony, so we are testing three strips per box and we are distributing it differently. In the bottom box that we have 10 frames, we treat it in frame three, six and nine, and in the top box we treat it in the frames two, four and six. This top also had a feeder, so we only have eight frames here. Uh, the other thing that we are assessing how the treatment are um, performing, so today what we came with all the Auburn team is to have a look on after 21 days of treatment, how this looks in the colony. Gotcha. So you've got a, a little container full of bees and alcohol, so you'll be doing your mite counts there. Um, yeah, what else are we looking at in the in the colony in terms of like an assessment on the effects of these of these products? Yeah, so. also we want that uh, the treatments control the mites, but also we don't want they hurt, hurt the colony. So if something weird, so we are inspecting all the frames in a colony. We are gently removing all the frames and assessing how many bees in each frame are and the area that is covered with brood, pollen, or honey in each of the frames. So then we are comparing if all the treatments are performing the same, regardless the colony mm -hmm. health. Gotcha. Lots of lots of pollen, lots of bee bread going on there, which is pretty common for our area. To um, it doesn't seem like we have a shortage of of, of pollen, uh, particularly in the summer around here. So far, we have assessing pretty much all of the colonies that we found a pretty decent amount of pollen in almost all colonies, and also honey. So they look healthy. They look good. So we are expecting that uh, after the treatment, they are really prepared for facing fall season. Okay, great. Okay, well, um, yeah, I don't want to interrupt mm -hmm. you any further. I know it's uh, hot, so everyone should uh, finish as quickly as possible and drink lots of water. Um, yeah, and we're gonna, I'm gonna head back to the lab and, and talk with Paolo. So um, these Veroxan strips are, are um, distributed by Vita Europe or Vita B Health. Um, so they actually provided these strips, which we really appreciate um, because they weren't for sale until literally today and we're, you know, we're, we're three weeks into our trial already. So we really appreciate that they provided those strips. We're not funded by them in any way, um, just providing those strips for our experiment. Um, but we're lucky that uh, Paolo um, from VT Europe uh, dropped by um, and is here today. So we'll go chat with him for a, for a few minutes uh, back at the lab. So uh, thanks, Augustine. And, Thank you, Joe. Uh, stay cool.